most dynamic and admired British karateka. A distinguished fighting man, faithful to the true spirit and philosophy of Karate Do, displaying tolerance and good manners to all, and yet, paradoxically, when engaged in competition, demonstrating an awesome combination of power, astonishing speed, and total control. Outside the dojo, there are no rules, no belts, flags, or whistles. The attacker will pick on the weakest or those who seem to be least aware of their surroundings, and they will often attack using a simple technique aligned with the element of surprise. Here, in this unique TV program, Elwyn Hall shows that traditional karate can be a most formidable and shocking power when unleashed in a no-holds-barred situation. Step by step, he explores the combat potential found in Shotokan karate applications. The most effective punches, kicks and counters. The most effective moves that are often overlooked or thought to be impractical. He teaches you new drills and explains how to develop, adapt and apply well-practiced dojo techniques. To develop the timing and explosive speed that helped him to become one of international karate's most respected fighters. This program is not aimed at the inexperienced fighter, but at the trained, well-disciplined karate student who already has the edge over most opponents. You will learn how to develop a highly effective means of self-defense, how to avoid confrontation by awareness, escaping the situation whenever possible. But when faced with the last resort, learning how to strike, where to strike, and when to strike. Selecting from the karate techniques which are essential and usable. Selected kicking, punching, and body shifting techniques. The heat of battle clearly proves that finely tuned training, acute awareness, and the right attitude can make traditional karate the supremely effective martial art and that the tiger really does bite.
as a, as a small child, I was very prone to be involved with anything physical. And uh, found out there was a karate club near my home. It seemed the perfect opportunity, so I took it. And karate, from the moment I began it, not that it was ever easy to me, but from the moment I began it, I understood it was a case of putting in real effort in order to get real returns. It seemed the ideal pursuit for me at that age. At a young age, I think any child, when you first walk into anything, which you would see from an outside point of view, is very exciting, very not, not mystical, but very, uh, very challenging, very exciting, very, you know, very demanding. You, you have certain expectations that go with that. Uh, once you start karate or any good martial art or any good discipline or physical pursuit, you soon realise that it's. Um, it's basically down to hard work. And you soon realize that the, the rewards come through hard work. Very systematic, very, very formalized, but hard work all the same. Once you understand that, and again, not necessarily on a conscious, oh, I understand, I put this X in and I get Y back. Not on that le level necessarily, but once you understand that, it makes it very gratifying and very satisfying. I felt a deep sense of satisfaction in that pursuit from the moment I started it. I found it very difficult, very awkward for my body, but that sense of gratification, that sense of satisfaction was very, very rewarding. It's one of the, you know, it just makes you keep going back each week, keep going back. It was never a natural pursuit for me. The shapes that classical shotgun karate demands was never anything which fit, which, which would fit my body easily was something I always had to push myself to, 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 to get any kind of a grasp of. So, in a way, it was that challenge, I suppose, the fact that it wasn't too easy for me, as I had found some sports a little bit too easy for me, I suppose. Uh, that aspect of it, that, that challenge, that, that continual developing, formalised system of learning your basics, keeping, keep moving forward, always a, uh, a systematic development of the intricacy and the technicalities of it. I found that demanding but very uh, attractive at the same time. I doubt if it was a conscious decision, or I know it wasn't a conscious decision at that sort of age, to look for something more than just a physical pursuit or more than just a sport, but certainly uh, maybe it was a, as a result of my own environment or maybe as a result of many factors, but certainly uh, I think I personally needed something which offered me something which would help develop the whole of me, not just the physical aspect of me, that, but help develop the, uh, you know, want of a better way of putting it, the, the mental side of me. So karate, if, it, if it's taught in a proper sense, uh, it does offer this to a certain extent. I'm not saying it offers all the answers, but there's certain aspects of it which can help to lead to the answers. And I found, after a while, that I was also attracted to that aspect of it as well, as, as many people are, in a very positive sense. I think the, the greatest influence that my original instructors had on me, and uh, not just me, but I think any of their students, or a few, quite a few of their students, was um, placing an understanding of not giving in, just simply not giving in, and objectivity. And I mean that, uh, again, at that age, you're not going to look at it like that. You're not going to look at it in the sense of, well, you know, I've got to be objective or not, etc., etc. But there was, a, there, there was a certain amount of open-mindedness applied to their training. Yeah, it was very disciplined and very hard. And it was always a case of every time you walk to the dojo, there was a little bit of apprehension. There was always a positive apprehension and a, and a challenge. So each, after each session, you felt like you'd finished something, you'd accomplished something. Uh, but for me, the main lesson, I think, was not giving in, simply not giving in, so I think. Uh, started at 11, left the dojo approximately 18. Uh, I'd, in their opinion, and and I think quite rightly they ha 
felt that it was time for me to move on, to broaden my horizons. Uh, it was, uh, I think, quite a quite correct decision on their part. I think any good sensei should be capable of making that decision. If you keep somebody uh, in a in a position where they're not necessarily, uh, they haven't necessarily got the right demands upon them in terms of difficulty, etc., etc., technical or otherwise, they're only going to stagnate. So they made, they made a correct decision, a decision which is ultimately best for me in terms of crying. My family were very much uh, I suppose you'd call them the kind of people that are very respectful of hard work, very respectful of effort. So they understood the effort which I had placed within towards karate. They understood that. They understood my my desire to achieve within it. So they were supportive. Yes. Trained at one point with um, Dave Hazard. Dave Hazard was a guest teacher in London. He didn't have a dojo in London. Guest teacher was a. Uh, was told of his abilities and uh, had a look and trained with him. You know, I certainly wasn't disappointed. It was fantastic. It was a different level of pride for me to see. Get a different approach to it, and a, and, a, and, a, and a level of excellence which I think I still think far few few people have actually ever achieved. Certainly in this country. Sensei Noi's approach for me, anyway, towards me. I can't speak for anyone else, but his approach towards me was always, and is always, even when I train with him now, is always. Uh, it's never direct at you. It's never direct in your face instruction. You'll very rarely correct you on, oh, move that hand there, or move that hip there. It's more a case of uh, instilling an absolute sense of uh, energy, and again, the same attitude of simply not giving in. Often when I look at Sensei Noido, I see a person who's, he, to me, he's like a manifestation of determination. And I think that's what he instills in the classes that he teaches. I would say that you look at Sensei Noida, you're seeing somebody who has, one way or the other, over the years that they've, they've practiced karate and taught it, and become the people that they are within it, they've somehow found a route or a position whereby they can focus everything. They can focus their physical commitment, their mental commitment, their, uh, their uh, how can I put it? They can create a certain sense of energy and vibrance in what they're doing and dynamism. You can see it, it's very, it's very evident. How would I define my style of fighting? I think the, the best way I could begin to answer that uh, it, is, it is a difficult question.